Are you still using long and boring spreadsheets to manage your test data? <sighs> what if I told you there is a better way? You're watching Automate Now. I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. <laughs> using spreadsheets to manage your test data can affect your test performance, readability, and maintainability. How does it affect performance? Excel files are not lightweight and take longer to process, as opposed to YAML or JSON files, for instance. When it comes to test readability, the code that is needed in order to read these spreadsheets is oftentimes cumbersome and complicated. Lastly, maintainability. As your dataset grows, these spreadsheet files become more difficult to maintain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to read test data from a JSON file. After watching this video, your test will thank you for it. And let us begin by taking a look at the scenarios that we want to automate. We're going to navigate to this page, automatenow.io. Then we're going to click here where it says Sandbox. This page contains a lot of neat things that we can automate. One of them is form fields. So I'm going to click on this right here. And here we have this web form that we can fill out. So let's suppose that we want to write a test that is going to fill out this form. Once it's filled out, it's going to click on this button that says Submit. We're going to have a second test. So let me go back. That second test is going to go here to where it says Tables. And we want to perform some validations on this page. More specifically, this table right here, the simple table. We want to check that the price for each of these items matches a given value. Let's go to the code. And here I have prepared two tests. Let's draw our attention to this first test right here. Test submit form three. And notice what this test is doing. We're navigating to the sandbox page and clicking on form fields. Once we see the web form, we're completing the form by filling out these fields right here. Once the form is submitted, we verify that a given message is displayed on the screen. And down here we have the second test, test verify table items. And again, we go to the sandbox page and we click on tables. Then I have this variable here called price. I'm getting the price for each of the items on that table. I'm saying tables that get item price. And then we pass in the name of the item that we want. So when I say oranges, the test is going to go to this row right here and retrieve this price right here. The same thing for laptop. It's gonna to go to this row and retrieve this price. And lastly, marbles. Each time that we retrieve the price, we store it in this variable called price. Then we compare this price to this expected value. We do the same thing for each of the items right here. There is one thing that you're going to notice about these two tests right here, and it is that we have a lot of hard-coded data. For example, here I have said hello, and I've given it a string. The same thing for the rest of the items. I'm hard-coding the values that I want to input in the form. Wouldn't it be nice to have all this data in a file so that we wouldn't have to hard-code it? Having the data stored in a file and having our test read that data is known as data-driven testing. And that's what I'm going to show you next. I'm going to show you how to make this test data-driven by using a Java library known as JSON. The JSON library makes it easy for us to work with JSON objects. Before we can work with this library, we need to add it to the pom.xml file. To get the Maven dependency, head over to this website, mvnrepository.com. Then we go into search for JSON and press enter. This is the one that we need right here. This comes from Google. Let's go ahead and click this. And as of the date of recording, this is the latest version. So I'm gonna click this and then click here to copy this text. Let's go back to our code. Now I'm gonna open the pom.xml file. It's this one right here. Then I'm going to look for the section that has all the dependencies, which is this one right here. And I'm gonna go all the way down and add the new dependency. Once we have this dependency added, we can click on this button right here so that IntelliJ can recognize this dependency. And that's all we need to do for now. Now let's go back to our test. So we want to make this test data-driven. In order to do that with testNG, we use data providers. Next, we're going to create those data providers so that they can be used by our tests. But before we do that, we need to have JSON data to process. So what I've done, I've created this file called testdata3.json. Let me go ahead and open this file. This file contains the data representation of the website that I'm testing. So let's have a look at this first object right here. This one says data one. And notice that it has these values right here, input field, chat box, radio button, and so on. That information comes from this page right here, this form fields page. Notice that we have this input field right here. We have some check boxes, some radio buttons, a drop down, and some other items over here. So I created a JSON representation of this page. And that's what we see right here. All of the items are listed here. Next, we have data two. And this one represents the table on the tables page. This table right here. By the way, the reason why I call this a table is because if I inspect this element, 
Notice that this is part of a table right here. In case you're new to JSON, I will create a video that will explain this more in detail. But for now, let me just give you a high level overview. So I'm going to collapse these items right here. These two braces right here represent a JSON object. If I expand this, I'm going to notice that I have two other items inside of it. These are JSON arrays. The way we distinguish an object from an array is the brackets. So this one contains brackets, while this over here contains a brace. So we can say that we have a JSON object which contains two JSON arrays inside of it. This is the first array, and this is the second array. Now, if we look at each array, I'm going to expand this one. This array itself contains another JSON object right here. If I expand it, notice that we have this key and a value. So there's key value pairs. The same thing goes for this other JSON array. If I expand it, notice that we have another JSON object. If we expand that, we have key value pairs. And what we want to be able to accomplish is to have different tests read different data from this file. So I could have one test read this JSON array right here, while a different test is going to read this other data right here. And that's why we're going to create a testNG data provider to read this data using the JSON library. Let's go ahead and do that now. I already have a class here where I have other data providers. It's called data util. Let me go ahead and open this utility class. And I'm going to create a new data provider here. So I'm going to start with the testNG annotation called data provider. Then we're going to create that data provider. We're going to say public. Then we need to say static. And that is because we have a dedicated class to store all of our data providers. This class right here has all the data providers that we use. And our tests are going to be able to refer to any data provider in this class. Then we need to return a two-dimensional array of type object. So over here, we're going to say object and then brackets. I'm going to call this method data provider three. Now we're going to write the body of this method here. And here, what I would like to do is to call another method. And I'm going to say return read JSON. Then we're going to provide the file path for the file that we want to read. In our case, it's this file right here called testdata3.json. So let me go ahead and right click this right here and then click copy path reference. And I'm going to select path from content root. That's going to be the first parameter here in this method right here. And I'm going to have a second parameter. That second parameter is going to refer to the JSON array that I want to read. So let me go back to the file over here. Recall that we have two JSON arrays, this one here and this one here. Each of these arrays has a name. In this case, this one is called data1. This one is called data2. So let's say that we want to read just this data1 right here. So I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to add a comma over here and paste that information. Now we need to write this method called readJSON. All right, so let me go ahead and start writing this method over here. I'm going to say public. This also needs to be static because I'm calling it from this other static method. This will also return a two-dimensional object array. So we're going to say object and then add the brackets and the method's name, read JSON. Then we need the parameters. First, we're going to say string and then call this file name. Another string, call this JSON object. As you can see, we're going to be passing in this information plus this information over to this method over here. So this method over here should go to this file right here, testdata3.json, and grab this information right here, data1. That's the JSON array. In the interest of keeping this video short, I'm going to be pasting in the information that I want to add into this method. So the first thing that I'm going to add is this. We're creating a file object right here because we need to read from a file. Then we create this right here, JSON element. This comes from the JSON library. For now, we're going to set this to null. Next, we're going to read the actual data. So we're going to go over here, and this is what we're going to do here. I'm going to put this inside of a try catch block because there are some exceptions that can occur, such as this file not found exception. And notice what we're doing here. We're saying that this JSON element is going to contain the parse data from this file over here. So we're calling it JSON parser. This also comes from JSON library. So we're saying JSON parser dot parse reader. So this reads the data from our file. And we pass in the file name right here. Because again, this right here is going to contain the file name that is read from over here. The next bit of information that we need is as follows. So we're going to first check that this JSON element is not null. In other words, that we have retrieved the data. And here we're creating a JSON object. We're calling this one JSON object one. And we're saying JSON element 
that get as JSON object. This call right here is going to return everything in this file right here. It's going to grab all the information in this file and convert it to a JSON object. And we're storing that in this variable right here called JSON object one. Next we have JSON array. The reason why we're using JSON array is because we're reading an array from that JSON object. Let me go back to the file over here. So this right here is the JSON object, this whole thing. But we want to read a JSON array. This is an array right here, and this is an array right here. We want to read this one over here. So we're saying from that JSON object that we created earlier, go ahead and grab this data right here, JSON object. This is the parameter that we passed in. So we're saying grab this information right here, data one. So it's going to go to this file, look for data one, and retrieve this information right here. And because that is an array, we need to use this method, get as JSON array. We store that information in this variable right here. Okay, so far so good. We've been able to retrieve the JSON array. But the problem is that this method right here needs to return this right here, this two dimensional object array. So we need a way to convert this JSON array into this type of object over here. For that, we need this code right here. So we're creating a two dimensional array, which we call test data. And here we're passing in how many rows and how many columns it should have. In this case, it's only going to have one row and one column. And the reason why it's going to only have one row is because this JSON array that size is going to retrieve this information over here. It's going to say, how many items do we have inside of this array? So if you look at this right here, this is the array from this open brackets to this closing brackets. Inside of this array, we only have one object right here. That's why it's only going to have one row. Now comes the best part. We need to grab the JSON data and store it in this two dimensional array. Let's see how we're going to do that. And we're going to be using this for loop right here. Let's have a look at what this loop is doing. For that, I'm going to put this window side by side so that we can see what's going on. So remember, we're paying attention to this data right here. And this loop is going to iterate through every JSON object inside of that array. In our case, we only have one JSON object inside of this array. It's this object right here. If we had more than one, it would look something like this. This would be a second JSON object. So obviously, this loop is only going to run once. And look at the first thing that it does. It says JSON object. Why are we using JSON object again? We already had one JSON object up here. We call it JSON object one. This one over here was to read the entire object. However, this one over here is to read the object that is inside of this array. So it's this object right here. So this variable called JSON object two is going to contain this data right here. Then we're creating a map. Recall that a map contains key value pairs. And we're using a map because this JSON object contains key value pairs. Here's our key, here's our value. Then we have an inner for loop. This for loop is looking at each key in the key set, this key set right here. So the key set refers to all of the keys in this object right here. So this is a key, this is another key. So it's going to have all of these values right here. The ones that are to the left of the colon. Then we have this string variable right here. Then I'm saying JSON object two dot get and I'm passing in the key. So through each iteration of this loop, first it's going to pass in this key right here in order to retrieve this value over here. So hello will go into this string right here. The first time that it runs. The second time that it runs is going to retrieve the number one. Then we're adding this information to the map and we're creating a mapping of the key and the value. So this map over here will contain this information right here on the first item, this information on the second item, and so on and so forth. After this is done, we add the hash map data to the two dimensional object array. And that's how we are able to transfer the data from the JSON file into this two dimensional array object that we can return to the test method. And that's what we need to do next. We need to return this data. So outside of these braces, I'm going to say return test data. And hopefully I did my job in making this easy for you to understand. If you didn't quite get it, please rewatch the video. And if you still have questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll do my best to get back to you. All right, so now we have this data provider. This data provider can now be used by our test method. So let's go back to the test method. And this is the method right here. So in order to read that data, we're going to add some attributes over here. First, we're going to say data provider class. The name of our class is this one over here, datautil.java. So here I'm going to say data util dot class. Now, what is the data provider that I want to use? Let's have a look at this over here. This is the data provider that we created. 
so I'm going to use the name of the method as the data provider's name. So let me grab this method's name right here and go back to the method. And here I'm going to say data provider and pass in that name. Now this specifies where the data is. Now our test method needs to receive that data. So here we're going to say hash map and then string. Let's call this hash map. The reason why the key and the value are strings is because if we look at this object over here, this contains strings, both on the left and the right. Now we can finally get rid of this hard-coded strings over here. So instead of having hello here, I'm going to say hash map dot get. Now I need to pass in the key. So what do I want to get? Let's go back to the file. We want to get hello. So the key for hello is this right here, input field. So let's grab this information and put it right here. The next item is going to be the checkbox. So let me delete this right here and I'm going to say hash map dot get. Let me go ahead and do the rest of them. And now I'm done. So this test is now fully data driven because we're reading the data from the JSON file. Let's go ahead and run it. So we're filling out the form now and it's going to click submit and it's done. And the test has passed. Great. We got that method out of the way. Now let's do this second method over here. In this case, we want this method to read a separate set of data. Now we want it to read this data over here. So let's see how we're going to do that. Let's go back to this data util class. We're going to create a new data provider. So let me go ahead and copy this right here and paste it over here. And I'm going to explain what we're going to do. First, let me change the name here to number four. We still want to read from the same JSON file. But in this case, we want to read a different object. This time we want to read this right here, this data two. So all I need to do is to change this one to a number two. And when this method executes, this read JSON is going to read all of this data right here. So I can go back to my method and I'm going to copy this information right here. But instead of data provider three, I want data provider four because that's the one that reads the data that this method needs. And again, I'm just going to copy this information right here. The next thing that we need to replace is this hard-coded data right here. We want to read these prices from the JSON file. This variable price is going to hold the actual price that we find on the website. That's why we're calling this tables that get item price. When we're passing oranges, it is going to go to our website and grab this price right here. So here, let's go ahead and remove this. We're going to say hash map dot get, and we need to get oranges. If you go to the file over here, notice that this is the price that we want. The key for this is oranges. That's why we're using oranges. We need to do the same thing for laptop and marbles. And now we're all set. This method is also data driven. Let's go ahead and run it. And we see that it goes to the website and it validates everything and the test passes. So as you can see, having data providers is very convenient. And the way we structure these data providers allows us to pass in any JSON file along with any data that we want to read from that JSON file. Now it's time for today's pro tip. You saw me use the data provider's method name when referring to the data provider in my test. If we look at my test over here, notice that I'm saying data provider is called data provider three. If I control click on this, it takes me to this method right here. However, there's one other thing that we can do. I can give my data provider a name by specifying it over here, like so. So in my test, I would now refer to test one instead of data provider three. In this video, we showed you how to use the JSON library. If you enjoyed this video, there's another video that you should watch. That one uses a different library called JSON simple. In that video, I showed you how to run the same test with multiple sets of data. Please click the video card on the screen to learn more, and I'll see you in the next video.